Hey everybody, it's the Ionic Guy. Welcome back, because this is the first video I have recorded in, I think over a month now. So as many of you know, me and my fiance recently moved to the Boston area, and for the last three weeks, four weeks now, we've been getting settled in, getting things figured out. We went on a vacation, which was very much needed, and all around it, just getting settled. We took a trip to Quebec, Canada in the Ionic 5, so I'm gonna put out a separate video on just that trip and what it was like road tripping up to Canada and experiencing their charging infrastructure. So stay tuned for that. I'm finally at a point now where I feel comfortable sitting down and taking some time to record a video. And I think it's pertinent because a lot has happened in the last month. There's a lot of information, a lot of news regarding Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis EVs. And today we're gonna to talk about some of them. But before that, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for your well wishes and kind words and understanding of this brief little hiatus from the channel. I've posted a few videos if you haven't seen them in the last month, but this is the first new video from me in a month. So first things first, we did see spy photos of the Ionic 5 and Kia EV6 both charging at Tesla superchargers, and they both had the North American charging standard charging port. Now, this is important because this is what we're likely gonna see on the refreshed 2025 Ionic 5 and Kia EV6 when they do come out later this year. Hyundai is committed to changing over to this charging port, and also you can always use an adapter to go from J3400 to CCS1 or whatever. The 2025 Ionic 6 is now starting to go on sale. It's basically the same as the 2024 model year, but the limited trim now does come standard with a head-up display, which I know a lot of people were really missing. I don't know why they didn't introduce that in the North American market from the start, but it is available for the 2025 model year. Now this is going to be the last version of this Ionic 6 on the market. For the 2026 model year, we are likely going to be seeing a mid-cycle refresh similar to the Ionic 5 with the bigger battery pack, new looks. There's been spy photos showing that the front end is going to have split headlights similar to the new Sonata, similar to some other Genesis products. So they're gonna be doing some tweaks to the exterior of the car as well. And it will most likely come with the Tesla charging port as standard. Now there has also been a lot of spy photos of the upcoming Ionic 6N, which is going to be a super high performance version of the Ionic 6, similar to the 5N. And there's also going to be, it looks like an Ionic 6 N line trim, which again, similar to other Hyundai products, is going to be a sporty looking version of the lower performance version of the car. So you're not gonna get super high performance, but you can get some of those sporty looks and touches. We have also seen spy photos of the Kia EV3 driving around Southern California. So that launch in North America is imminent. It's already on sale in Korea and it's starting to go on sale in Europe. So expect North America relatively soon. We've also seen more spy photos of the upcoming Ionic 5 XRT, which supposedly is launching in North America later this year. And that is going to have more off-road focused tires, wheels, a um, little bit more ground clearance likely. It's got bright red recovery hooks on the front bumper and it will have a more rugged exterior as well with a redesigned front and rear fascia. And this is likely to try and eat into some of Subaru's market share. Their off-road focused cars are very popular here in North America. So Hyundai's trying to get into that mix as well. I for one am really excited to take a look at that. Now with this off-road focused Ionic 5, I really hope they're planning on doing some more protection for the battery pack. If people are gonna be doing off-roading with this thing, they need to make sure that that battery pack is not going to get punctured. Now this pack Last week, Hyundai did also have its CEO Investor Day where they talked about their long-term strategy for the market and how things have changed since the last time they did this. They've talked about the EV slowdown, which I guess is a thing. It doesn't seem like it to me, but it seems like they are preparing for it. We finally have confirmation that the large three-row electric SUV from them is going to be called the Ionic 9, not the Ionic 7. There was some kind of questioning going on there because we were seeing spy photos of cars that still said Ionic 7 on them as recently as a few months ago, even though the rumor was that it was gonna be called the Ionic 9. But Hyundai in one of their slideshows wrote Ionic 9. So it seems like that is going to be the name going forward, which is good to finally know. We have seen more spy photos of it. We've seen spy photos of the interior. One of these spy photos showed over 300 miles of estimated range with 95% state of charge on the Ionic 9. Now granted, that car only had a little over 100 miles on it, and if you've bought one of these cars, you know that 
when you first purchase the car, it really overestimates your range and then it brings it back down to reality as you're driving at various speeds over that first month or two. But supposedly this thing's gonna be bigger than the EV9, so if it has over 300 miles of range, that would be fantastic. Supposedly the Ionic 9 is going to be revealed in production form at the LA Auto Show this November. I am considering flying out to LA for the auto show. It would be my first auto show ever so that I can check out the Ionic 9 in person. So let me know down in the comments if you guys would be interested in Ionic 9 coverage. Another thing they talked about at CEO Investor Day was the fact that starting in 2026, they're gonna be overhauling all the infotainment and operating systems across their cars and they're going to be moving to Android Automotive Operating System. Some automakers already use this, like Polestar, I forget what other ones, but a lot of them are starting to use this. It brings good implementation with Google Maps for navigation and route planning. So that would be really good to see because currently their route planning, in my opinion, isn't fantastic. I would love to see them just move to Google Maps or Waze. Um, but it's kind of strange that they're doing this so soon after just implementing CCNC across Hyundai and Kia products. We've just barely gotten to know this new software system and two years from now, it sounds like it's gonna be disappearing. So interesting to hear this, obviously more news coming in the future on that, but supposedly this is gonna launch with the Genesis GV90 in 2026 with all their other cars to follow suit. Now, the next thing from CEO Investor Day I wanna talk about is Hyundai's push into extended range EVs. And basically what this is, is it is an EV with a small gasoline powered motor to charge up the battery packs. And they're claiming giving you over 900 kilometers of range, upwards of a thousand kilometers. In miles, that's about 560 miles. But they're talking about this because there's now this new focus on plug-in hybrid electric vehicles because it doesn't seem like a lot of people are ready to move to full EVs, which I think people are just doing themselves a disservice by going with PHEV because in my opinion, it's the worst of both worlds. You have a gas engine to take care of and you have low range. So I just think that there's no need for them personally, but apparently Hyundai thinks there's a market and they're talking about implementing this in large SUVs, pickup trucks, these big vehicles that have to tow a lot, they need a lot of capacity and instead of putting in a 200, 250 kilowatt hour battery pack, you can put in a, I don't know, 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will help keep the price down and you can also get big range. Now the thing here is that this will be an all electric drivetrain. That gas motor will not be powering the wheels directly at all. So it will be like driving an EV, but with the extended range and capability of a gas car. So I think it could be a good stopgap for some people who maybe drive a big truck, that tow a lot, that still wanna have good range, but also wanna to move towards an EV, but don't wanna spend 70, 80, $90,000 for one of these vehicles that has a 200 plus kilowatt hour battery pack. So we have seen this Kia electric pickup truck test mule driving around, and that could be what this vehicle is. It could have a small gas engine hidden in there somewhere. Uh, we just don't really know at this point but I did make a video on that and you can check out that in the link in the description. Now, in the meantime, I still do really hope that Hyundai and Kia release a full-size electric pickup truck, but we'll just have to stay tuned and see what comes. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to get a lot of this news out to you. I know I didn't go into too much detail, but there was a lot of information to cover over the last month and I would have never gotten to it if I had to make an individual video for all of these topics. So. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Check out my store at ionicguy.com for accessories for your Hyundai, Kia, or Genesis EV. The auto door lock module is now available for Ionic 5, EV6, GV60, and Ionic 6. So if you want automatic locking doors, check that out in the description as well. You can install via the trailer light wiring harness, so no wire tapping. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.